Hey, real estate agents, is Jeff Underwood with the weekly closer along with my business partner, Joey Sampaga, the man with the plan. We are the real estate yeah. marketing maniacs. Oh, yeah. How's it going, buddy? Doing all right. How you doing? Doing awesome, man. Doing awesome. So, it's Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I think we might have to go get some Mexican food. Yeah. Well, I think I'm supposed to meet my wife later for that, but anyway. Hey, we want to bring you a special podcast today that's all about niche marketing. We've been doing a lot of classes around the Valley, and we're getting a lot of folks that are coming up, or real estate agents coming up to us after, and some of them are asking that very question about niche marketing. What exactly does it mean? How do I need to get into niche marketing? Because too many people, Joey, especially in real estate, they think, I want to work with people that want to buy on the east, you know, in the East Valley, in the West Valley, um, buying condos or selling big houses or baby boomers or millennials. They're all over the place. Yeah. About who they're willing to work with. That's right. It's like they want to be jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. Absolutely. So I want to share with you a little bit about niche marketing, about building your tribe, about um, some things that Joey and I are actually testing with our own little niche, and we won't tell you what that is right now, but <laughs> we uh, will definitely give you some ideas here as we go. One of the things I want to tell you first is what exactly is a niche, or what does it mean to niche market? It's to go extremely narrow with what you do or who you serve, becoming known for that one thing. Hmm, that's good. For that one thing. Yeah. And then we're actually going to teach this in, we have, what, three classes coming up. Um, over the next couple weeks, and we'll make sure that you get those dates and times because we'd love for you to come out. We're going to do an exercise in this class. Each person will get their own handout that they'll be able to go through this particular exercise to help you figure out more about your niche market or where you could maybe spend a little bit more time with your your marketing efforts and your content to really start getting people that you want to work with and about building that tribe. You see a tribe is to create a brand, to craft an extraordinary experience, or evoke a set of feelings, to draw your line in the sand and stand for something so powerful that your ideal clients flock to you, literally building a tribe around you. Hmm. If you haven't read the book Tribes yet by Seth Godin, I highly recommend it. You can also see his TED Talk about tribes. Just go to YouTube and type in TED Talk Tribes Seth Godin. It's G-O-D-I-N. It's a great talk, and it will give you some awesome ideas for how you can develop your own niche marketing your own tribe. So I'm I curious. Like, yes. Because there are people out there who are afraid to niche themselves so narrow because they don't get yes. – they're, they're thinking they're not going to get enough business. Right. What, 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 what would you say to them? So I would tell you this. So I actually have a book, and I'm glad you asked this, because there's a book out there that I've uh, read called Selling the Invisible. Hmm. by Harry Beckwith, Selling the Invisible. And he goes on, in this book, he talks about that very thing. So he says, stand for one distinctive thing that will give you a competitive advantage. He also shares, he shares an example of an airline that did that very thing. Um, I want to find this for you. So here it is right here. And this is exactly what you said, Joey. They the employees were so scared, they were fearful that they were going to lose business because this group or, or the marketing team for this airline decided, hey, let's go so niche. Yeah. So what they did was, um, he, here's what some of the people say. So why all the fear? Because standing for one thing means you cannot expressly stand for other things, huh. which means what? You have to sacrifice. Yeah. You have to sacrifice things. So they were like, no, we cannot, we can't give up the business. We have to say we are this and this and this. Mm -hmm. We're sacrificing opportunity. Forget that. Huh. So they went on to what they decided to do was instead of just being the one airline for tourists, mm -hmm. which is what most of their clients were, yep. they decided to really focus in on business travel, which business travel, they normally, people will pay a little bit higher because you get a certain type of business travel. I think this one they included you know, olives in the martinis or whatever, right? <laughs> that, I mean, it, it talks about that actually yeah. in the book here. Um, but they were they were afraid they're going to lose all their tourists. Okay. The, the thing, ha what happened was, as soon as they started specializing in business travel, this Euro class, mm -hmm. they called it, for business travels, they were filling up their, their seats quicker huh. with the business travel. And then they were able to then lower 
the prices on the remaining seats, which now the tourists flocked to again because they were actually cheaper. Wow. So they raised the price on certain seats, Mm -hmm. filled up as much as possible, then lowered the price on them. So that actually was a win-win for them Hmm. um, instead of feeling like, oh, my gosh, we're going to lose our business. So we have to be the same way with real estate. He goes on to say to broaden, and this is something to really think about with your business, to broaden your appeal, you have to narrow your position or your focus. Okay. So give us some examples uh, for, for real estate. Yes. So examples would be this. You... You know, new home sales could be an example where you are focusing strictly or purely on new home sales. Now, does that mean if somebody comes along that wants you to sell their house, you know, it's uh, somebody in your database or what have you, it doesn't mean that you wouldn't help them sell the house. What the point is, is this. You're picking a niche and it's called niche marketing. So most of your marketing would speak to new home sales. Yeah. If you want to do that one. So you could technically go out with your camera, go to all the new home developments, start talking up new home sales. People would start then recognizing you as that new home resource, basically, right? Makes sense. Um, Luxury properties are some other ones. Lifestyle. So um, that goes right along with uh, also demographics. So, for example, what if you want to work? What if your ideal client, and this is the key, figuring out your ideal client. And if you come to the class, the exercise we're going to do will help you really focus in on who your ideal client is. But let's say your ideal client is helping people, you know, baby boomers in colder states make a transition to Arizona. That's pretty niche there. Right? Yeah, because now you're focused on making connections with people in other states, outside of Arizona actually, Mm -hmm. and helping them get to Arizona to find a property And enjoy the warm weather. Sure. Makes sense. Not that I like it when it's over 100, but anyway. Yeah, exactly. Now, I know that uh, in some of our classes, you talk about a gentleman named Ian Watt, who is very niche. Yeah, Ian Watt. So he's up in Vancouver, uh, Canada. He... He's so niche that he actually did a video one time that, uh, and you can probably find this video out on YouTube. It's Ian Watt, uh, I-A-N, and then W-A-T-T. But he actually did a video where he says... If you are wanting to buy or sell a house, I am not your person. Nice. He says, I don't get it. I don't understand the lifestyle. But he says, if you're wanting to buy Strata Condo, Mm -hmm. I am your guy. I can help you do that. Because there's a big difference between buying a standalone single-family residence versus a Strata Condo. Sure. Makes sense. Totally given his message saying, "I, I just, this is what I do. So home run right there. So you could also think about, um, so geographic market, and we kind of talked about that a little bit. Yeah. Now you can, another thing with geographic is if you want to be the local expert or or what Gary Vaynerchuk says, you want to become that mayor of whatever town you're in, right? Mm -hmm. By making enough connections with business people and and what have you. Somebody that's doing a great job with that right now is uh, Sue Pinky Benson out in Naples, Florida. I mean, she has figured out that she can use one thing, and that's Facebook Live, mm-hmm. and then go around and interview business owners, restaurant owners. Uh, she goes down to the beach. She shares all about Naples, Florida. Makes and sense. And she is crushing it. I think she actually spoke at one of the big Remax conventions here recently, and it was all about how are you using video and Facebook Live to to stand out from the crowd. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the key. With with all this marketing, this niche marketing stuff, the key is, are you standing out? Are you different than other people? Do you have a niche idea that would help you stand out from all the other agents out there? Sure, sure. I think that's a big... Well, so the next question is, okay, so you've got your niche. Now, mm-hmm. how do you actually market that? Um, you know, I was actually reading this uh, article from a uh, social media examiner yeah. about uh, niche marketing, and they were talking specifically Facebook. Okay. They said uh, they gave three tips. Number one is speak their language. Uh, if you're if you're um, niching a in a one. specific, uh, um, you know, let's say a community or, or a lifestyle, you have to speak their Absolutely. language. Absolutely. Right. And then tip number two is reinforce their mood and interest, posting pictures and quotes that appeal to uh, the unique mindset of this niche, you know, and you can also share um, other people who have the same niche right. um, to, you know, give that information. And then tip number three, the final one is um, support their social stance. It says if your business openly aligns with a niche audience 
on an issue or controversial subject, you, you can publish posts that make clear statements to signify your support. That's a good, that's a great point. Yeah. Those are good. I like Social Media Examiner. Yeah, they're it's good. good stuff. No, I love that. And definitely you have to think about, once you figure out who that niche is or who that audience is, one thing to ask yourself is this. What social media platforms do my target audience flock you know, to use? Yeah. Or what do they flock to? What do they use with regards to social media? Because if you're targeting, like we were saying, people moving from the cold states to Arizona. Yep. Baby boomers, let's say, you're probably not going to use Snapchat as much as you're going to use something like Facebook. That makes sense. Because that's where they play. That's right. So, hey, we really want you to come out to uh, to the classes. We'll make sure that the uh, the dates and times links are in the description for us uh, for the classes, unless you have it pulled up right there. I, I do have it pulled oh, up. Oh, okay. Um, so we have it in three different areas. We have... Um, Phoenix, Scottsdale, and the West Valley. So the West Valley will be May 10th, okay, at Weimar. Uh, on May 11th will be the one here in Phoenix. Uh, that'll be at the uh, Security Title Corporate Office. And then next week, or the following week, uh, which is May 17th, will be in Scottsdale at the SAR um, Association. Got it, got it. Yeah, I think the West Valley starts at 11. Phoenix and Scottsdale both, I believe, start at 10. Correct. That's in right. In the morning. So we'd love for you all to come out and uh, check out the class. Um, we're working on a, um, some giveaways for this month, so we'd love for you to come out, sign up uh, at the class itself for some of the giveaway, the things that we're going to be giving away what, later what are they? Month. What are they going to win? Okay. I guess I better just tell you. <laughs> so we are going to give away. Uh, let me just pull this back up here. We're going to be doing a drawing at the end of May, and it's going to be for... Um, I think we're going to give away three, blue, three or four of them. Four it's of the them, yeah. um, the blue snowball microphones. That's an so awesome condenser microphone. mic. It's really great for doing your your market updates. It's, it comes with USB. You can plug it right into your computer. That way, if you don't want to be on camera, that's right. You can just record your screen. Use the nice microphone that <laughs> we're going to be giving away. Um, yeah, I have one of them myself, and it's awesome. Yeah. So show up to the class. Get registered. Um, also, another way to um, enter the drawing is to subscribe for the weekly closer. Yes. So we'll make sure that everybody knows how they can subscribe to the weekly closer. I know one place they can do it is at theweeklycloser.com. That's right. <laughs> theweeklycloser.com. Just go check it out. So anyway, we're super excited about the class. It's going to be awesome. I hope that you make it out because I'm going to really, really challenge you to think about your specific niche again you'll leave with an actual form or a, um, a document we'll go through together and you will have a really really good idea of what you need to be focusing on for your real estate business so it's going to be a great class absolutely hey until then hope you all have a fantastic day take care Bye.